taken advantage of the knowledge that brings speed the knowledge that brings strength the knowledge that brings bread the knowledge that brings riches and the knowledge that brings favor my concern is not within the realm i have conquered this realm and i did that fast now i hear that there is an advantage beyond this realm and i am aware that there are things that can happen in this realm that can destroy everything so i now want to start investing in a realm higher than this what must i do what a young man pay attention you are learning something tonight how does a young man conquer this realm he demonstrated that you can gain time you can be rich you can have influence be a young man of integrity a cool-headed young man he would come and kneel down you know what it takes to kneel down when you have money you know what it takes to kneel down when you have influence you know what it takes to kneel down when you have an advantage of time and he said good master i acknowledge there is something you know that i do not know what must i do to inherit eternal life verse 18 i love this Jesus said unto him, why do you call me good? There is none who is good but, is, but God. You know what he's saying? He's saying you cannot, with respect to what you are saying, you don't call any man good. In other words, you have discerned something about me that I'm not just an ordinary person. You are dealing with matters of eternity and you are coming to me. That means you acknowledge that I am God because you are calling me good. 19. Jesus now answered him and said all of these commandments, you know them. He tested him against the law and then the man replied verse 20. He said, sincerely, I will not lie to you. And I don't mean to be proud. I have observed this from my youth. When a young man says, I observed it from my youth, how old was he when he started living it? Because as at the time he was talking with Jesus, he was still young. Even if you use the age of Jesus to gauge him, he was still within his studies. And this man had conquered life and he was saying that I started that journey right from when I was a child. And from a child, thou hast known the Holy Scripture, which is able to make you wise unto salvation. Are we together? And so he told Jesus, happily and convincingly, that by the grace of God I have kept this. 21 is where the problem starts. Jesus beholding him loved him. I love Jesus. Before he would lash out, he would commend what you have done sincerely. He looked at him and said, truly, I'm impressed. Really very impressed. But here is my message tonight one thing thou lackest with speed with strength with wisdom with understanding with skill alongside the supporting results showing and he comes to Jesus and Jesus said you have done everything well but there is one thing that you lack and look at what Jesus said I'm sure the man was attentive wow me there is nothing I would lack that I cannot trade all these forces to get it so reveal to me Jesus said no if I tell you what you lack you will not believe it so I am going to use a test to reveal it to you I am going to put you through a situation right now that will reveal to you that you truly lack it are you ready for the test he says go thy way sell whatsoever thou hast and give it to the poor and thou shalt have treasure in heaven then when you are done come then take up your cross the cross and follow me 22 it's not his fault and he was sad at that saying for he went away very grieved what was the basis of his grief for he had great possession please follow this story remember where we started the race is not to the swift, the battle to the strong. Here is a young man that passed our test that under normal circumstances you would look at. There, there were few people in the Bible that were like that gentleman. Men like Joseph, men like Daniel, they excelled at a level and they were all young when that happened. Other people like Abraham, you know, they were idol worshippers for a long time. Abraham wasted over 75 years before he answered the call, struggled again till about 100 before he really started, you know, working purpose and so on and so forth. But here is a young man that met Jesus himself and the Bible called him rich, the Bible called him young, the Bible called him a ruler. And then Jesus began to probe him and even Jesus himself was impressed at the level and the extent to which he had taken advantage of the resources and the forces, the laws of the kingdom to create an excelling life. But he speaks to him and prophetically he speaks to a generation. He says, one thing thou lackest. You do not lack speed. Clearly, your result shows that you have it. You do not lack wisdom. You do not lack strength. You do not lack understanding. In fact, 
you are skillful listen to me that young man that stood before jesus was not a person that young man was a generation a generation that for some reason had been able to maneuver their way through understanding to conquer life under normal circumstances that young man was a representation of a generation and he came and stood before jesus you would think by the human standpoint this gentleman was flawless because generations past had a problem with speed generations past had a problem with strength generations past had a problem with wisdom generations past had a problem with understanding generations past had a problem with skill here is a generation that is a correction and an improvement of every other one standing rich young ruler if it is wealth we have found the principles and you see young people who are able to rise to positions of riches and wealth with the dignity of kingdom integrity today around the world you have young people who are teenagers and yet they have accomplished strides that people who it took people decades rich people who were able to gain time you will see a young man at 25 and he does not know what to do with his life again because the journey of 100 years he compressed it in 10 years and achieved everything he would have done in 100 years at 25 he's already a ceo of a global conglomerate at 25 he's already making impact across the world young young and then ruler influence influence such a young man having tremendous influence i can tell you how he became rich i can tell you how he gained time i can tell you how he became a ruler that was an advantage of the forces in ecclesiastes chapter 9. don't ask him how he became wealthy don't ask him how he was able to gain time don't ask him how he was able to rise supernaturally all of these results are controlled by these forces of advantage any man who sustains the knowledge that brings speed stamina and capacity wisdom understanding and skill has gained that which tames life like a dog so this generation with all the achievements and then responsible also you see attributes of character humility generations past suffered pride they had all these things but they were arrogant and when we learned from them we said we will correct it now the young man comes as a correction of many failures past believing that if he stood before jesus jesus will say wow you are even talking of eternity it means everything is fine but now he says you have kept all this and i give you credit for it but one thing thou lackest and I'm not going to tell you I will put you through a situation that will reveal to you by yourself the one thing that you lack the Bible says he loved him do not forget so he was not being sarcastic this was a young man that had done commendably well one thing thou lackest he gave him two principal tests number one go thy way and sell whatsoever thou has do you know what that meant to sell everything you have then when you get the money he says give it to the poor he would have said give it to the state or give it to a global society that will recognize you and you can use your gift as a ladder to your influence now he's saying put all of that value and give it to the poor the poor do not have the capacity to tell you thank you they do not have the capacity to even reward you the poor sometimes because of mental bankruptcy may not even appreciate what you are doing he said give it to the poor then he says when you are empty come back to me and then take up the cross not your cross the cross and follow me and the man said what kind of man are you i already called you good master i came here respecting you you want to destroy and frustrate me the bible says he was grieved that statement revealed what was left that statement revealed what could cancel out the excellency of every other thing the bible says for he had great possession his pain was not because of the absence of results his pain was because of the excellency of results good master hallelujah so the first test let's deal with it was sell what you have and give it to the poor what exactly was jesus trying to examine in that man number one was the heart condition 
the heart condition. There was something about the heart of this young man. Even though dexterous in every sense of the word, Jesus looked through him and discerned the heart of that young ruler, which represents the heart of a generation. It was a test to show him the condition that as much as he had achieved this, unknown to him, his heart had been connected to these things. Now, you need to understand that this was not a bad gentleman. This was not a lawless gentleman. The finest of the breed within a generation. And yet, after going through the vetting system of Jesus, the conclusion of Jesus is that even you, the best and the greatest and the brightest, you are still found wanting. This is a message for a generation. That young man represented the finest within a generation. Commanded results in all spheres. Influence, anointing, grace, power, wisdom, and respect. Honor for the fathers. The passion to still learn some more. I do not know about you, but if I find a young man like this, or if my life becomes like this, I may give myself a little pat at the back and say, well done, you have done well. Your life is a worthy correction of the mistakes past. But when he stands before Jesus, Jesus says, it is true you have done well, but make no mistakes and don't be carried by pride. There is something your success has done to you that you are not even aware of. 